those of you that have seen my little video on making coffee percolator heating elements will have seen that I actually use a little sand core um, to form the inside cavity of that particular um, casting. Now this is the way I make the sand cores. It's quite crude. A um, couple of heated uh, plates here that are, have got an electrical element cast into them two little dies that have been machined up and this is just two percent resin coated sand I just put it into the dies usually shake them a little bit to help consolidate the sand as I go give it a quick stir with an old screwdriver to force the um, sand into the undercut in the die scrape the top of it off now I cut a hole in the, the core because these cores are very hard to get out of the die. I've got to wait till the sand's just gone off a little bit to do it. I was a bit quick there. That's better. Without this hole, it's very, very difficult to get the core out of the casting after it's made. It's difficult enough with this hole. And that's one of the reasons I actually only use a 2% sand. For most of my core work, I'd use a bit stronger. Now I need to smooth up the end of this a little bit just to neaten it up to compress the sand on the bottom so that it's got some strength. And now we just have to sit and wait uh, until we're two and a half minutes have passed so that the core of the cores have uh, set cured off completely. And the reason they have to be smoothed up on the end this is actually part of the die I make the part in and this is where the core sits and this bottom bit and it's the little bit I smooth up there has to fit fairly neatly in the die and has to locate the core quite well the, these heating plattens they've actually got one of these elements cast into it these are the actual elements that go into the coffee percolator thing and I got a couple that uh, had uh, suffered a bit and wouldn't go in the die properly so all I did was to straighten them out and then re-bend them into a sort of a W shape and they're actually a 1600 watt element which is a bit too strong for what I want here so I've series these two plates effectively making each um, plate 400 watts uh, getting there that looks as if they're pretty well set off now I found that a, a smart whack on a steel plate like this seems to help the cores come free of the mould. I always swap them around to make certain they are heated evenly. Quick wipe on the jumper to get any loose sand off them. Back between the heaters, tighten the G-clamp and away we go again. That shouldn't be too bad with a little bit of luck. Yeah. Just turn that a few times. This is just a piece of hardwood that I've shaped the end of a little bit to help smooth the ends of the cores. It's just been fairly crudely ground up. And again we wait until our two and a half minutes of, uh, are up. This uh, shell core sand, resin coated sand, it, it would have to be about the easiest way to make cores that I can think of. Its only drawback is that it requires metal moulds because those moulds are currently at around about 180 degrees centigrade and they have to be that hot to get the resin in the sand to cure off. 
The only thing that now remains to be done with these cores is that the very tip of them has to be painted with this paint that looks rather like silver frost. Um, it is, I think, a sort of a silver frost, except that it, it doesn't actually dry. It's a proprietary mould coat made by Fasico, and it's called Mould Coat 15. Um, what it is, is a chill coat. And when I pour this casting, the metal impacts directly on the top of this core, and that can make the metal penetrate the core a little bit and make the casting a bit rough in that area. This chill coat seems to stop that but it's terribly messy stuff to work with. It gets absolutely everywhere and never seems to wash off anything. You've got to be very, very careful with it. And of course, it's just another fiddly little job that one has to do in order to make a half decent casting.